question is, uh, you talk about the transformative effect of media and compare the role of media that owns people through speaking to their loss versus the media organs like Al Jazeera to talk to the minds of people to mobilize them. How would you draw the map of Turkish media, politics and society relationship within the larger context of the Middle East? Does Turkish media have an Al Jazeera? What are most important trends in Turkish media? Oh, it's, it's a beautiful question. First of all, let me speak about Al Jazeera. I, I, I'm not an Al Jazeera fan. I'm not speak. I'm not working w uh, with them. Uh, but uh, I know even here in the United States that many people do want do inform themselves about uh, Occupy Wall Street, Occupy Oklahoma, op Occupy this and that place uh, from Al Jazeera better than their national or local uh, media because they know that the information is being blocked uh, by uh, regional governments and Al Jazeera being and uh, you know nonpartisan uh, TV channel is in fact providing uh, more information I'm not going to say uh, more uh, uh, you know f uh, objective information because sometimes you can lose your objectivity while running after objectivity uh, but uh, you have more information in Al Jazeera. We have seen Al Jazeera come out of uh, uh, out of blue <coughs> during the uh, second uh, Gulf War. Um, then mm, the Western media had created a, what was called uh, embedded journalism. This was a shame uh, in the history of journalism. The journalists were embedded to the uh, troops and they were looking everything from the eyes of the soldiers. And of course, they were watching the war from the American perspective. You know, if you are staying with the American soldiers, all you look at actually are the militants, are the adversaries, are the enemies. You never look at the pains, uh, grievances of the regular normal people. You have to be at the other side in order to see the full picture. So at that time, the world uh, turned their attention to Al Jazeera, which had more abilities to, so to show the general picture. Mm -hmm. Al Jazeera mobilized this advantage into uh, becoming the new uh, screen of the Arab world, mm -hmm. particularly. Uh, and starting from then on, Al Jazeera became the free uh, venue of uh, discussion, intellectual discussion about what's going on in the world, in particularly in the Muslim Arab world. And I uh, claim if it was not for Al Jazeera, of course if it was not for Facebook and Twitter also, but if it was not for Al Jazeera we wouldn't have seen the recent uh, uh, changes in the Arab world, what's called the Arab Spring. And I will s say the same thing about uh, a few uh, newspapers in Turkey, uh, and I want to, I, I, I believe uh, these are acclaimed facts, so I uh, just want to enter into a kind of advertisement, uh, and I won't count my newspaper as the first one, uh, so I, w I will try to be objective. But uh, a minor small newspaper called Taraf uh, Daily in Turkey had played enormous role in. Uh, 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 in leaking uh, classified information, formerly classified information, to the public about misbehaviors uh, of the Turkish soldiers, mm -hmm. uh, of uh, the previous uh, fundamental secularist governments, uh, of the uh, you know, non-democratic uh, activities of the Turkish security forces, sometimes of the Kurdish uh, separatist organization, their cooperation, in fact. Also, uh, my newspaper Zaman is the largest circulating newspaper in Turkey and gave a shoulder to Taraf's cause by means of at least republishing what Taraf published yesterday, uh, today, so giving a wider readership to Taraf's uh, publications. Uh, of course, the former elite had their own uh, media camp. And this media camp resisted to the to our publications. Uh, we were demonized. We were seen as anti-establishment. We were seen as you know revolutionaries and so on. Or we were claimed to be making up, forging uh, all those news items and so on. But uh, all the uh, leakages to the uh, Taraf Daily uh, were coming from military sources. 
uh, and the, uh, I would call them uh, whistleblowers of Turkey. We don't have whistleblowing law in Turkey, so they, they will never be known who were they. Uh, but these were like uh, patriotic uh, officers who wanted to see their country as a democratic uh, member of the European Union. So they leaked information to the press of the you know, uh, unjust, uh, incorrect un applications of their uh, commanders and so on. Uh, th these are all at the hands of the Turkish uh, judiciary now, uh, more than 350. Uh, X and on duty uh, army personnel are being uh, judged. Uh, we don't know whether all of them were uh, committed uh, crimes in this process, but certainly some of them did. Uh, these people are being judged of uh, <coughs> killing 17,000 uh, people, one seven. Uh, thousand people, uh, we, we call them uh, killings with, with, by unknown assa assaultants. So no, nobody knows who killed them, but 17,000 people were killed within the last 20 years, uh, and the Turkish judiciary was not able to detect who did this. Mm -hmm. uh, s today we know that, in fact, there were some people uh, positioned in the army who worked together with the uh, separatist terrorist organization PKK uh, to run this uh, mechanism, I would say, of terrorism and uh, state uh, violence in return, uh, to make money out of this, to continue on uh, human trafficking, drug trafficking, and so on. So in that sense, I may say, if it was not for Taraf Daily, if it was not for uh, my newspaper, uh, Zaman, if it was not for, uh, once again, a small newspaper, but very influential newspaper, Bugün, uh, we wouldn't have seen the recent silent revolution in Turkey. We would probably either continue as a non-declared dictatorship, where the periphery, 90% of the population, would be uh, silent, uh, second, second-hand subjects of uh, the, you know, non-declared uh, sultans of Turkey, mm -hmm. uh, and thanks to these, uh, this new revolution in the Turkish media, uh, I will say reshuffling of the cards in, in the uh, Turkish media, uh, I am optimistic for the future of Turkish democracy. This reshuffling also will be a guarantee of control on the newcomers uh, in politics. You know, uh, it is not that the, these these newspapers are not pro-government. Certainly, Taraf Daily is a ultra-left-wing newspaper. It's not pro-government newspaper. Uh, they will continue on observing, balancing, uh, controlling uh, the government. So they will continue to be the for fourth power in the Turkish uh, democracy, even after the uh, periphery becomes the real core. Last question. If you can answer this question very briefly, then we can uh, uh, give an end to our discussion. So, what is the significance of the Gulen movement in this era of transformations in Turkey? How do you see that? Uh, first of all, uh, I'm not an objective person on this issue. I'm, I see myself as a part of the what you called Gulen movement. This term is used only in the United States. Uh, there in Turkey, we call Gulen movement as Hizmet. We don't want that uh, to be named on the name of one particular person, uh, Fethullah Gulen, who is residing in Pennsylvania in the United States. Uh, and we don't want it to be called a movement because it is not a movement. It does not have a target. It does not have a, a, it does not, uh, have a problem to be solved, and it does not offer a solution to the problem. It's, it, it is basically uh, a congregation of people who believe in the good nature, uh, in the essence of uh, human beings, that we are created as good people. Mm -hmm. And uh, through education, we can revive that goodness uh, in our natures. This may sound as naive uh, to the first listeners, uh, but it worked. Uh, Turkey had passed through two uh, mobilization in the last 30 years. And the, the recent uh, silent revolution is, in fact, a, a result of this uh, mobilization. One was a horizontal mobilization, meaning 
uh, from rural areas, people moved to the city centers from smaller cities to the larger cities like Istanbul. Today, Istanbul is one of the largest uh, metropoles of uh, the world, with about 15 million uh, residents. Uh, in year eight, 1982, 64% uh, of the Turkish people lived in villages. Today, only 24% of the Turkish population uh, lives in uh, villages, meaning in 30 years, 40% of the population were displaced. They moved from their houses to some, somewhere else. Uh, normally, this creates lots of sociological problems, you know, internal problems, new mafias, you know, all kinds of uh, mobs and so on. It didn't happen in Turkey. Why? Because there was also an upward mobilization. The upward mobilization was basically run uh, on the genius of Fethullah Gülen and the people like him, but Fethullah Gülen is the front runner on this issue. He actually uh, mobilized uh, the congregations in the mosques, you know, regular people in the mosques, to go for help to those people who moved from rural areas to the cities. Of course, the children of the families who moved uh, to the cities were the most uh, under-advantaged in these conditions. So they needed somebody to take care of them, you know, give scholarships, bursaries, uh, open schools for them, open boarding uh, houses for them, and so on, and give them uh, ambitions, give them hope for their future. Uh, I may say, thanks to this horizontal mobilization and concurrent uh, vertical mobilization that was mainly induced by his met by Gülen movement, as you call it, uh, Turkey didn't pass through uh, such a sociological calamity. Uh, in fact, we have never had the, the social uh, repercussions of uh, the urbanization that, let us say, in the 19th century Europe passed through. Uh, that urbanization actually gave birth to the First and Second World, War, uh, World Wars in Europe, uh, which cost the lives of about 60 million people. In Turkey, those two mobilizations, the fact that they, they, they happened uh, you know, together, uh, actually created a new potential. Uh, the people who move to the city centers, they are uh, normally looking for new jobs, new futures, and they are more willing to do, to, to make concessions. And if you show them uh, the right direction through education to move from the lower, lower echelons of the society to the middle class and then to the upper middle class, that will create an immense potential of development, social solidarity, uh, intellectual improvement, uh, openness to the, uh, to the general world, uh, openness to the others, uh, openness to a multiculturalist uh, uh, framework of the society and so on. In fact, I may say, if it was not Fethullah Gülen and uh, the people like him and the people who followed his uh, advices, uh, let me say about myself. My father was uh, a teacher in a uh, village. Uh, his father was a stone cutter. Uh, his father was living in Trabzon. This is a uh, northeastern uh, most city, I may say, of Turkey. Uh, so probably my father earned five times more than his father as a school teacher. But he was not university graduate. At the time, high school graduates were able to become uh, primary school teachers. He was not university graduate. And uh, he moved to Samsun. This is in the middle of Turkey. And then I moved to Istanbul, uh, studied in the, one of the best universities of Turkey, and even continued on, moved to Israel, and then later to the United Kingdom to do my PhD. I speak several languages. I assume my, my grandfather never heard of. And certainly I am earning more than my father. So this upward mobilization together with the horizontal mobilization created new potentials for Turkey. Uh, some of these people who mobilized both uh, horizontally and vertically decided to go into politics and they created Justice and Development Party. Uh, most of those people decided to stay uh, not aloof to the politics, but outside of politics. They said, our task is to become socially active, non-political, non-partisan uh, citizens of this country. 
to uh, together, uh, you know, uh, take, lift uh, the standards of this country. This is what you call Gulen movement, or what I say, hizmet. Okay, thank you, thank you, Mr. Badi, for being with us today. Thank uh, you. Hope to see you again in Tucson. Inshallah.